exercise three, page 81, we want to consider the total claim amount uh, under the condition that the claim number process is a mixed Poisson process. So what is it we want to find? We want to find what the mean value of S is at a given time and the variance of S at a given time. And our assumptions on the total claim amount is that it is given as the sum of claim sizes And it is the sum of total claim sizes up until the number of claims n at time t, where we assume that the claim sizes are iid and also independent from the claim number process, which is mixed Poisson in the sense that the claim number process is given as a standard homogeneous Poisson process, so this is standard homo Poisson, uh, where the inner clock is scaled with a mixing variable theta, and this theta has finite variance. And we also assume that the claim sizes have finite mean and variance as well. Okay, so we want to find the mean value and the variance in this case. Uh, note that it isn't anything we have done in the book yet, because in the book we find the mean value and the variance of S uh, in the renewal case. So uh, the mixed Poisson process is not a renewal process, so this is something new. However, we can reuse some of the results that are in the book um, in particular, if we consider page, let's see, page 73, we get that the variance of S of T given N is equal to in multiplied by the variance of x1, and also that the mean of the total claim amount given n of t is just equal to n of t multiplied by the mean of x1. And this is something that is possible since these calculations are merely based on the fact that uh, the n's and t's are independent. So since n of t, uh, sorry, not n's and t's, since n is independent from x, and also since the xi are iid. So this result here, it would also follow even if the x's were not independent. Uh, however, this result uh, it only holds if the x's are independent. So uh, if, if you have difficulty understanding why these two results are true, then take a look at the next video where I will show these two results in detail. But up until now, we will just take it as a fact of life that these are true and try to calculate the mean of the total claim amount in the mixed Poisson process. Okay. So the mean of the total claim amount is, using the double expectation property, the mean of the mean of the total claim amount given in, and then like this. And from page 73, we can plug the conditional mean of S in. So the conditional mean of S is n of t multiplied by the mean of x1. And this is just the mean value of n of t multiplied by the mean value of x1. Now, we do not know the mean value of x1. However, on page 68, 
we can find the mean value of n of t in the case that it is a mixed Poisson. And what we get there is that it is equal to the mean value of theta multiplied by mu of t, where mu is the mean value process underlying uh, the mixed Poisson process. And in our case, since the underlying Poisson is standard, standard homogeneous, then uh, the mu of t here is just t. So this is the mean value of s. Now, in order to find the variance of s of t, we use the law of total variance, or also called lemma 2, 3, 4 in the book. So the variance of s of t is equal to the mean of the conditional variance of s of t given n of t plus the variance of the conditional mean of the same thing. Okay, so the conditional variance was given here, and we also have the conditional mean, so what we are calculating is the mean of n of t multiplied by the variance of x1 uh, plus the variance of n of t multiplied by the mean of x1. Now essentially these are also the calculations that uh, are going on on the bottom of page 73 as well, so we're actually just repeating some of this. Uh, so we have the mean of n of t multiplied by the variance of x1 plus the variance of n of t. And then when I take the mean of x1 outside of the variance, then I need to take the mean of x1 squared. Because when I take a constant outside of a variance, then I have to square it. Okay, so uh, once again, we look at page 68 in the book in order to find the mean value and the variance of the n of t when it's mixed Poisson. And what we see is that this thing is equal to, so I plug in the mean, which is mean of theta multiplied by t, and then multiplied by the variance of x1, plus the variance of n of t is the mean of n of t, multiplied by 1 plus the variance of theta divided by the mean of theta multiplied by t uh, and then parenthesis and in the end I have the square of the first moment of x. Now I can sort of gather this into the mean of theta multiplied by t and then a parenthesis with the variance of x1 plus 1 plus the variance of theta divided by the mean of theta multiplied by t multiplied by the mean of x1 squared. So this is the expression for the variance of s. Now what were we asked to do in the exercise? Well, let's just write up what we have now. We have that the mean of s is given as the mean of x1 multiplied by the mean of theta multiplied by t. And we have that the variance of s, well, it's given by a rather complicated expression, but it's mean of theta multiplied by t and then multiplied by something in which there is a term where t is in there, right? So I have a t here, multiplied by the mean of x1 squared, parenthesis. So what are we asked to do then in the exercise? Then the exercise tells us, show that in the mixed Poisson process, so let me just find the exercise again. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, it says show that 
the premium as according to the variance principle divided by the premium given according to the expected value principle tends towards to infinity as t goes to infinity. Now let us just recall what the premium is in both cases. So in the variance principle, the premium is given by the expected value of the total claim amount plus a loading constant multiplied by the variance of the total claim amount. And in the expected value principle, we load the total claim amount, the expected value of the total claim amount by a factor of rho. So we want to show that this goes towards infinity. Well, first of all, we can see that the first term is just one over one plus rho, right? So we don't think that much about that term. And then we look at the second term, it's alpha divided by one plus rho, which does not rely on t. And then we have the variance of s divided by the mean value of s. So I have the variance of s here, I have the mean value here, so mean value here and the variance of s here. And I see that this thing occurs in both the variance and the mean value of x, uh, and the mean value of s. So I can remove this since it cancels out in numerator and denominator. And what I have left is the variance of x1 plus 1 plus the variance of theta divided by the mean of theta, then multiplied by t, uh, multiplied by the mean of x1 squared, divided by the mean of x1. Now, everything in here is constant except for this t. And since these two things are positive, then this entire thing will go and blow up towards infinity as t goes to infinity. So in the mixed Poisson process, uh, if we compare the variance principle with the expected value principle, then the variance principle gives you a premium that is asymptotically larger than the expected value principle, much larger. And one of the reasons for this, one might guess, is because that the mixed, value, uh, the mixed Poisson process um, gives us something called over dispersion. So uh, the variance of n is always strictly greater than the mean value of n. And this is intuitively one of the reasons why this is the case. Now, however, if we consider a renewal process, we do not necessarily get the same result. So the book asks us, compare this limit relation with the case when n is a renewal process. So now let's assume n is a renewal process. Now we want to look at what happens with this premium ratio. So p variance divided by p expected value and this formula still stays the same, so I still get the 1 over 1 plus rho, and I still get the alpha divided by 1 plus rho. But now I have some other relations that hold for the asymptotics of the variance and the mean of s, if I pretend that n is a renewal process. So what I do is I consider proposition 3, 1, 3. 3, 1, 3 in the book. That tells me something about how the variance and the mean grow. And they grow at the same, with the same speed as t, or, or proportionally with t. Both of them, they, they grow proportionally with t when we let t go to infinity. And uh, what we get is, well, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus rho, plus alpha over 1 plus rho, and then the numerator goes towards, well, a rather fancy expression uh, that I'm just copying off of the book right now. Mean x1 squared, like this. And uh, the denominator goes towards lambda multiplied by the mean of x1. So the, the point here is just that in the renewal process, this number is strictly smaller than 
infinity and the 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 growth rate of the premium given by the variance principle and the premium given by the expected value principle those two kind of have proportional growth rates so um, that's what we see about the renewal process uh, in opposition to the mixed Poisson process where this ratio tends to infinity <laughs>